The greatest test of faith is when we face death. Agree? People react differently in the hour of death. Some of, the, some of some people would panic, some would be afraid, some would feel hopeless. But some would feel hopeful and some would feel excited that it's time to go. There's no other time in history wherein we are being reminded that life is short. Now is the time. Because of what is happening sa coronavirus, no? because of this pandemic, we have been reminded every day. A lot of people have already passed away and it reminds us that um, anytime the Lord can take us. And the stories about death no, in the news have uh, caused a lot of worries and anxieties in a lot of people. But it should not be that way. As Christians, we can face death with faith and confidence in the God who loves us. So this morning, we will study uh, how Jacob and Joseph responded to their imminent death. If you notice, the Genesis started with the creation story, but it ended in the story of death of two patriarchs, si Jacob and ni Joseph. So we will study how they react so that we will learn what true faith means from their example. The passage for this morning is from Genesis 48 to 50. Okay? So in Genesis 47, makita nato dere, si Jacob, di ba? Ang ilang pamilya ni Addo sila sa Goshen. Dito sila nagsata sa Goshen in Egypt. And in verse 29, chapter 47, verse 29, when the time for Israel to die drew near, he called his son Joseph and said to him, Please, if I have found favor in your sight, place now your hand under my thigh and deal with me in kindness and faithfulness. Please do not bury me in Egypt. But when I lie down with my fathers, you shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. Joseph said, I will do as you have said. He said, uh, Jacob said, Swear to me, promise me. So Joseph swore to him. Then Israel bowed in worship at the head of the bed. So makita nato dere, Joseph was appointed by Jacob to carry out the last wishes of his father on where to be buried. So Jacob's desire was that his funeral will be a public testimony that he is a true believer of a living God. And then makita ni mo, Jacob worship at the head of his bed. Jacob's worship nagpakita sa iyang faith. Kay, even though his circumstances contradict it. Remember, Ang promise ng Panginoon kang Abraham, Isaac, o Jacob is that they will have the land in Canaan. But at this time, Jacob was in Egypt. But he still believed that God will fulfill his promise na tagaan sila sa promised land sa Canaan. Now, in Genesis 48, Joseph was told, Your father is ill, meaning terminal na ang illness niya. So, ang gibuhat ni, ni Joseph, gikuha niya ang duhan niyang anak, si Manasa, Manase and Ephraim. And then, when Jacob was told, your son Joseph has come. So, nilingkod siya sa iyang kama. And then, Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan. And there he blessed, blessed and said to me, I am going to make you fruitful and increase your numbers. I will make you a community of peoples and I will give you this land as an everlasting possession to your descendants after you. It's amazing, no? Nung mamatay na si Jacob, pero wala paghihatag ng ginoo sa iyaha ang iyang promise. But still, he recalled, Okay, Joseph, God promised me personally that he will give to my descendants the promised land. 
sa last words ni Jacob, he did not talk about the difficulties of his life. Pero ang iyang na-remind siya sa promise sa ginoo. And then share niya ang, ang promise sa ginoo sa iyang anak. And then uh, you can see in verse 5, Now then, your two sons born to you in Egypt before I came to you here will be reckoned as mine. Ephraim and Manasseh will be mine, just as Reuben and Simeon are mine. Any children born to you after them will be yours. In the territory they inherit, they will be reckoned under the names of their brothers. So makita nato dere, Jacob formally adopted Ephraim and Manasseh. Supposedly, si Reuben ang firstborn son, and under uh, ancient Near East, pag firstborn son ka, you are entitled to double portion of the inheritance. So, kung sa'yo madawat sa'yo mag-isuon, pag panganay ka, times two ang iyong makuha. But here, Jacob formally adopted Ephraim and Manasseh. Manasseh. In other words, gihimo niya si Joseph as firstborn. And Joseph will have double portion and then split between Ephraim and Manasseh. What, what Jacob did is he called both Ephraim and Manasseh and then Jacob blessed them. What he did, you, with his right hand, he placed it at the head of Ephraim, which is the younger younger one, and then sa, right, sa, sa left hand niya, gibutang niya sa ulo ni Manasseh, the older one. Okay, and then Jacob blessed the two boys. And then nabantayan ni Joseph. Uh, Joseph was displeased. Sabi na, oh, tay, sa iyo ang imong pag-bless. Dapat, you have to bless Manasseh with your right hand because he's the firstborn. And then sa left hand, kay Ephraim. And then sito bag ni Jacob. But Jacob refused and said in verse 19, I know my son, I know. He too will become a people and he too will become great. Nevertheless, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his descendants will become a group of nations. And then Jacob blessed Ephraim over Manasseh. This is the fifth time in Genesis that the Lord chose the younger one over the older one. The first one was when God chose Abel over Cain. Abel was not the firstborn. And the second one is God chose Isaac over Ishmael. Ishmael eventually became the father of the Arabs. Okay, And the third one is when God chose Jacob over Esau. The fourth one is when God chose Joseph over Reuben. And cut on for the fifth time, God chose Ephraim over Manasseh. So we can see here that you know God is sovereign. Uh, man's ways are different from God's ways. Sa tao, dapat ang panganay, but in the eyes of the Lord, He, he chose to bless who he wants to bless. So, what happened here? Jacob blesses Ephraim over Manasseh. And then, uh, Jacob gave Joseph a piece of land which Jacob took from the Amorites. Okay, so let's pause here. So, what are the lessons that we can learn sa Genesis 48? Okay, that God's ways are different from man's ways. So, what we, we could expect that dapat si Manasseh ang uh, mas dako ang blessing, but lahe ang kagustuhan ng ginoo. So, God's choice always prevail. Okay? God's choice always prevail. The same is true with salvation. Because man's way, in order to be saved, dapat you have to do good, do this, do that. But, ang masunod is ang kagustuhan ng ginoo. God's ways, God's way to salvation is that we have to believe in His Son. And it's not by works that we are saved, but through faith. God ways are different. Dapat musunod ta sa kagustuhan ng ginoo, dili sa atong kagustuhan. And the second lesson that we can learn is as parents, the best blessing that we can give to our children are spiritual blessings. You know, Ephraim and Manasseh, they are the sons of Joseph, who is the second highest ruler of Egypt. So naan nila tanan? They have money, they have the best education in Egypt, they have everything in life. So what can a parent or grandparent give to your child. It's more than money. What we can give to them is spiritual blessing. Jacob gave a double portion of Canaan to Joseph. Pero magtingala mo, so what's so special? Para magtingala mo, okay, di ba, Canaan at the time was fam in famine, so there's nothing. 
Jacob did not even own a piece of land uh, except yung ano yung bird, uh, yung ano yung lands Amorites. Pero by faith ni siya that God will give those land to him and he is giving that to his grandchildren. Diba, usually pag manghatag tao gift, kung unsay naa nato ato ihatag, di ba? Pero ang nakita nato kay Jacob, he has given to Joseph something which he has not yet owned. Jacob has given to Ephraim and Manasseh God's promises, which is to give the land to him. So we can see here that Jacob has a lot of faith. He was dying. And God has not yet given him a piece of land. The promise ang ginoo sa iyang amahan, si Abraham, Isaac, sa iyaha, but still, wala pagyapon na hatag. But nonetheless, he said to Joseph, God will surely give it to us. And I will give it to your son, the double portion that we will get. So the best gift that we can give to our children is the spiritual blessing that we get from God. Because that is something that cannot go away. Kasi ang kwarta mawala. Wealth, material wealth, things in life can be, can, will be gone. But the best gift we can give to our children is the spiritual blessing that, that we have from the Lord. And also, we can see here, bakit ano hindi fair si God? Hindi ba fair si God? Bakit hindi nalang equal Ephraim and Manasseh? You know, God gives us different gifts. So we should not compare ourselves. Ay, dili man ko si Ephraim, di man ko si Manasseh. But the point is, the Lord has given us give different gifts. So, what is important is that we have to use our gifts. We should not compare with each other. Just like, um, if you have, you, if you notice some, some of the church members here, here have gift sa music. So, ay mo magsuya, ay, wala mo ko anang gift. You know, know your gift and allow God to use your gift for His glory. So, to those who have been given more, more will be expected. So don't compare yourself, ah, uh, mas dato man siya, ako mas dili. You know, we have different gifts. So don't compare. Still, the Lord will bless all of us because we are His children. Okay, so let's, let's move on. In Genesis 49, after blessing Ephraim and Manasseh, what happened is that Jacob blesses his son. If you read Genesis 49, uh, initial reaction, what is the significance of this blessing? But you know, very important ang blessing ni Jacob. Kasi ito, makit, kasi ang blessing ni Jacob is prophetic. God spoke through Jacob. Kung unsay mga gisulti ni Jacob, mahitabo later on. Okay, so let's explain one by one. In verse 3, Reuben, his firstborn son, my might, the first sign of my strength, excelling in honor, excelling in power. Turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel. For you went up unto your father's bed, unto my couch, and defiled it. This refers to the story in Genesis 35 verse 22. Ruben, nisulud siya sa kwarto ng kabit o ng concubine sa iyang amahan and then he had relation with Bilha. And when Jacob heard of it, walay reaction si Jacob. But at his deathbed, he cursed Ruben. Magtingala mo, nga nang gibuhat po ni Ruben? Because during those ancient times, Practice na siya, pag, let's say, if a father has already died, it is the practice of the son to go and have sexual relation with all the concubines of his father to show that he is in control. I am the one who is in control now. Uh, this is just, just like what happened to Absalom when uh, he betrayed David. Uh, Absalom uh, had relation with all the concubines of his father David. So, kana yung practices before. Medyo, kwan, no, kadiri, but uh, that is what is the practice before. But the point is, Reuben did not wait because his father was still alive. So, disrespect niya ang amahan. Sayop ang iyang gibuhat, therefore, his father cursed him. Ang curse niya, gitang-tang kang Reuben ang double portion blessing, gihatag kang Joseph. In fact, if you look later on in the history of Israel, the tribe of Reuben was never successful. Well, there are there were no leaders that came out from the tribe of Reuben. And then, and verse 5, To the tribe of Simeon and Levi, sabi ni Jacob, They are brothers, their swords are weapons of violence. Let me not enter their counsel, 
Let me not join their assembly, for they have killed men in their anger, and hamstrung oxen as they please. Cursed be their anger, so fierce, and their fury, so cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob and disperse them in Israel. What is the significance of this? Makita ni mo that Jacob cursed Simeon and Levi. What happened here? Balik ta sa Genesis 34, their sister Dina was raped by Shechem, son of Hamor the ruler of the area where Jacob and his family were living. Ang gibuhat ni Hamor, he, he offered to intermarry with the Israelites. And nasuko ang mga anak ni Jacob, sabi nila, okay, I w- we will only agree provided that you have all your men circumcised. So, so nisugot si Hamor and all the men in Shechem, so they, have, they circumcised themselves. And after three days, Simeon and Levi uh, took sword and killed all the men in that city. That's why Jacob cursed them in his blessing. You know, the Bible contains a lot of weird stuff. Mabantay ni mo, may, may, ano, may homosexual rape, may, may rape, may incest. Grabe kayo, but all of them may purpose. Ito pala purpose because if you look at later on, God indeed punished Simeon because Simeon, in later on his Israel history, Simeon become, became integrated to Judah. Nawala si Simeon sa 12 tribes of Israel. And si Levi, wala siya gitagaan ng Yuta. They were given cities, but they were not given land. But si Simeon, Simeon was integrated with the tribe of Judah. So the curse of Jacob was carried out. So makita na to, all our actions have consequences in our in the future generations. So, dapat magcareful ta. Kung say gibuhat nato karon, although dili matama panish, pero ang looy ang atong mga descendants. So, this is also true when we feel that there is injustice in this world. Ngano daghan ng mga the, the criminals get away with it. But you know, God will punish that person. Maybe not in his lifetime, but in mga descendants niya. Ganon ka grab ang ginoo. The Lord will really there, there is really justice, no? God is a God of justice. So, atong gibuhat ni Simeon and Levi, gipatay ng mga innocent men, they, they eventually suffered later on in life. Although, not sila mismo, pero uh, ilang mga descendants. So, we can see here, the original sons of Israel, so 12, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, Benjamin. So, si, Be- si Joseph, nahimo siyang firstborn. So, under niya, si Ephraim and Manasseh, he got the double portion. Si Reuben, uh, dili na siya firstborn. And then, uh, eventually, Ephraim and Manasseh, they are considered one tribe each. And then si Simeon, na absorb siya kang Judah. So, th- these are the 12 tribes of Israel. So, na fulfill good ang curse ni Jacob. Okay, next. This is important. This is the blessings that Jacob g- gave to Judah. Sabi na, Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son will bow down to you. You are a lion's cub, Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down like a lioness who dares to rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nation shall be his. He will tether his donkey to a vine, his call to the choicest branch. He will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. If you look at this passage, Judah was exalted. Kisa si Judah. Let's recall, Judah was the one who suggested to sell Joseph. And then he committed sin with Tamar. Remember? With his daughter-in-law. We can see that Judah was not a good person, but eventually he redeemed himself. How? He offered to give his life in place of Benjamin. So nagpromise siya, tay akong bahala kay Benjamin. And then, even when the brothers met, it was Judah who repented. Nung nahuli sila, nahuli si Benjamin na naay silver cup, it was Judah who represented the 12 brothers in repenting, saying that God has uncovered our sin because of what we did to Joseph. So we can see here that God is a God of second chances. Yes, Judah has committed a lot of mistakes, 
Pero he redeemed himself by doing the right thing. And then he was exalted here. Ang sabi ni Jacob, mahimo siyang, uh, he will be exalted among his brothers. And then, uh, this is important, verse 10. The scepter will not depart from Judah. What is the scepter? Ang scepter, masabot ana, ang authority or ang, ang kingly line will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nation shall be his. So what Jacob is saying is that from the tribe of Judah will come a king. So he is referring to the Davidic king, King David. And then from the Davidic king, about ang Messiah. The Messiah. Sa Messiah, the obedience of the nation shall be his. So obedience ng tanan, it prophesies the coming of the Messiah. Okay? Who will rule throughout the earth. In fact, in Revelations 5 verse 5, it is written here, Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seas. The na mention ni Jacob, Lion of Judah. It refers to Jesus Christ, who is the Lion of Judah, and He is the one uh, coming from the root of David. He is the promised Messiah. So makita pa lang sa mga blessing ni Jacob ang plano ng ginoo. And then there are so many other blessings given to other sons of Jacob, but we will not discuss them one by one. Medyo mataas ka ayo. These are the important ones. And then, ang pinaka uh, taas among the blessing is the blessing that Jacob gave to Joseph, which is found in verse 24 to 26. So makita nato in those passages that Jacob blessed uh, Joseph six times. So gi-recall ni Jacob na bisan na gidaog-daog, gidaog-daogan si Joseph sa iyang mag but still, he did not waver in his faith. Nig stand firm siya. After King Solomon, the kingdom of Israel divided into two. We have the kingdom of Israel and Judah. Ang kingdom of Israel, ito yung, it is also known as Ephraim. And the capital is Samaria. Okay? Ang Judah, where the line of King David come from. So separate sila. The problem with uh, Ephraim, the Assyrians conquered Israel. And then, ang mga Israelites, gidala sa lain nasod, and then ang tagadlain naso gidala sa Israel, nag-intermarry. Okay? And then, what happened here is that the Jews remaining in Ephraim intermarried with Assyrians. That is why they are called the Samaritans. And they are half-breed. That is why, makita, at the time, in the time of Jesus, ang mga Hudyo, they despise the Samaritans because they are not pure breed. Because they lost their identity as Jews because they intermarried with Assyrians. Whereas among Jews, they are in the Judean region, they are the pure Jews because they never intermarried. That is, that is the history there. So, mag-isuon na sila. Okay? But uh, in the time of Jesus, galit mga Jews sa mga Samaritans. So, that is the history. Okay, so let's move on. After Jacob blessed his children, naghatag sa instruction na, Bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron. Nung namatay si Jacob, Joseph threw himself on his father and wept over him and kissed him. God fulfilled his promise to Jacob. Because you know, God, in earlier passage, sabi ni Ginoo, do not be afraid to go to Egypt because I will be with you. And Joseph will close your eyes. And indeed, God fulfilled that promise. When Jacob died, Joseph was there to close his eyes. So, unsa yung makita nato? Makita nato. Once the Lord has promised to you, He will always fulfill it. You can see in Genesis 50, giunsa siya pagberi, gi gi dalasya together with all the family, his families from Egypt to Canaan, and there was a big group of people, a big procession, and then he was given a state funeral. And then Jacob was buried in the cave where his father Abraham was buried. Pagkatapos mailubong si Jacob, nibalik sila. There are two, death, two deaths here. The death of Jacob, and then in 
Genesis 50, the death of Joseph. But of course, as you know, after namatay si Jacob, the, brother, the brothers of Joseph told Joseph that before our father died, nagsuti siya na pasaylo ami. And that's the time that Joseph wept. Because all these years, Joseph has already forgiven his brothers, but his brothers cannot forgive themselves. Just like a lot of Christians. The Lord has already died for our sins, pero, pero we don't feel that the Lord has already forgiven us. But that, that should not be the case. Because pag ingon ang ginoo na pasayluan na ta, gi, gi pasayluan na ta. That is His word. Okay, so let's go to the, uh, what happened to the death of Joseph. In verse 24, Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and will take you up out of this land to the land he promised an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the Israelites swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up from this place. Our faith is best tested at the time of our death. And the test yung makita gud nato unsa ka grabe ang pagtuo ni Joseph. Nag-ingon siya, God will surely help you. God will surely fulfill his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And nag-ingon pa siya, God will surely come to your aid then you must carry my bones from this place. So nag-ingon si Joseph na, please do not bury me in Egypt. Bury me where God will bring you. And then in verse 26, so Joseph died at the age of 110. And they embalmed him. He was placed in a coffin in Egypt. When we say Joseph was embalmed, kasi yung Egyptians, they perfected yung mummies. So gimamify si Joseph so that his body was preserved. He was placed in a coffin in Egypt, period. This shows that these heroes of faith believe in the promise of God even though they did not receive what was promised to them. That they believe in God. And you know, you know what? God eventually fulfilled His promises because in Exodus 13.19, Makita na to, fast forward ta, Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the Israelites swear an oath. And he had said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up with you from this place. After the, the plagues in Egypt, the Israelites made an exodus from Egypt going to the promised land. Gidala nila ang bukog ni Joseph. And you know how many years have passed? Almost mga 300 years. Mga 200 years rather. 200 years after namatay si Joseph and after ni Gawas ang mga Israelites sa Egypt. Dala-dala nila ang bukog ni Joseph. And then, not only that, when they went to Canaan, it's not an easy job na, oh, oh dili na sa Canaan na, they have to fight for it. And it took many years and then napay sila mga, they disobeyed God. They wandered in the desert for 40 years. And then pag abot sa, after end of 40 years, Joshua eventually led them to battle, several battles. We have the, 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 the famous battle of Jericho. And eventually, they finally settled. And it took how many years? Almost 300 years. From the time na matay si J Joseph until siya na bury, around 300 years. So we can see in Joshua, Chapter 24, verse 32. And Joseph's bones, which the Israelites had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem, in the tract of land that Jacob bought for a hundred pieces of silver from the sons of Hamor. This became the inheritance of Joseph's descendants. It took 300 years bago finally malubong ang bukog ni Joseph sa promised land. And Throughout those 300 years, Joseph's coffin was a constant reminder to the Jewish people to have faith in God. You know, siguro, isipin mo ah, siguro mga, mga apu-apuhan niya, while crossing the Red Sea, dala-dala nilang bukog. While in the Jericho battle, dala-dala nilang bukog. 
all of those times, they were carrying the bones of Joseph. It is a constant reminder to them that Joseph had faith in God. So it is an encouragement to the Israelites during their, all the trials that they went through. You know, God promised them uh, the, uh, to give them the promised land, but that God did not promise them that they will have the land easily. They have to fight for it. The God came out tears. But eventually, once God has promised, God will fulfill that promise. It is an encouragement to us. Grabe ang pagtuo ni Joseph sa ginoo. Dapat inana po ang atong pagtuo sa atong ginoo. I would like to correlate this with Hebrews 11.21. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's son and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. Verse 22. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. Hebrews 11 talks about faith. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, what is faith? Faith is the confidence of what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. Kanang faith, what did good ni mo makita, pero nagtuo ka. And naghatag og example ang Hebrews, ang book of Hebrews about the patriarchs who had faith. And sabi niya, Jacob had faith because even while he was dying, he blessed each of the sons of Joseph. Nung namatay si Jacob, dili niya nakita ang promise na ginoo. Kasi it's not fulfilled because the land of Canaan is in famine and they are in Egypt. But Jacob believed that God will eventually give them the promised land. On the part of Joseph, you know, di ba, ang life ni Joseph, he has so many up and downs. He was sold to Egypt. He was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. And then, the kan siya mga experiences Pero nga no, sa tanan na yung experiences, ang gisayt na faith ni Joseph is the time he spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning his burial of his bones. Ang pinakadakong faith ni J- Joseph is not when he persevered during trials, no. The greatest faith of Joseph was seen at the time of his death. And this was cited in Verse 22. So, ayaw mong maghuna-huna na morbid kayang story, but this is, this passage shows the greatest faith of Joseph. It's when he said, God will surely bring us to the promised land. And as proof of my faith, don't bury me here. Bring me there, to the promised land. God has promised Abraham more than 200 years before Joseph's death. 200 years. 200 years before namatay si Joseph. And then, Joseph was finally buried 300 years later. So it's a 500 years gap. You know, Joseph, he don't want to be associated with his success in Egypt. He, he doesn't want anything to do with Egypt. I don't want that. I want what is uh, God's best. And that is God's promised land. He wanted his final resting place to be in God's promised land. Sabi ni Joseph, I, 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 di ko ganahan ka Egypt, this is just temporary. You know, he was successful, he has everything, he's the second highest ruler of the land, he has everything in life. Sabi ni Joseph, I don't want this one. I want God's best. I want the promised land. You know, Joseph's story about his wishes to be buried in the promised land, medyo morbid, but it has a lot of significance to us. It shows that just like Joseph, dapat we should not put our hopes in this world. Because this world is like Egypt. And the world around us like Egypt. Okay, you may have a good life, you have a good family, okay, God has blessed you, but this is not our final resting place. This is not our home. Or some of us are also in Egypt in the sense that uh, you are in the stage of slavery, land of slavery. This is 
alam mo, the, the world is like a land of slavery. Kasi every day nagtrabaho ta, diba? we, parang we are in a rat race. Magtrabaho ta, kaon, but eventually mamatay rapot ta. But this, there is more to life. It's not about working, getting our goals, having, uh, raising our family. It's more than that. It's more than that. Our final resting place is not in this world, but in the promised land. Which is, where is the promised land for Christians? It's in heaven. That is our promised land. We have to look forward. So, just like Joseph, I don't want here, I don't want to be buried here in Egypt. I want to have God's best. I want to be in the promised land. So, the greatest test of our faith is when we face death. How are we to respond? We should not be afraid of death. Because, nakaingon po sa Hebrews 9.27, Death is a divine appointment. Every one of us will die someday. Naray mauna, nay maulahe. There are some people who die very young, and there are some people who are lucky to live very old. But the point is, life is temporary. Life is temporary. We will all going to die. It's just a matter of time. So the question is, are we ready? Are we like, Jacob and Joseph. When Jacob died, he was not afraid. Sabi na, you know, God has promised my father, Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph. So you have to bury me in that promised land. Si J- Joseph, ganun din. Don't bury me here. Bring my bones with you to the promised land. And in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it is stated here that these heroes were credited for their faith. So, dapat inana po ta. Because, nakaingon sa Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 9. For by grace, we have been saved by faith. Not by our own. Not as a result of works, so that no one can boast. Salvation is by faith. Nahinangutan na. Katong sa Old Testament, wapa man si Jesus, how were they saved? They were saved by faith. They were saved by faith, by believing in God's promises. The book of Genesis contains the stories of people who have faith. So as we end Genesis, so let's wrap up Genesis. Ano may naasa Genesis? In Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything was perfect. God intended everything was perfect. God said it was good. But the problem is in Genesis 3, sin entered into the world. God said to Adam and Eve, don't eat from the fruit of uh, knowledge of good and evil. But the serpent deceived them. So the cows they disobeyed God. That is why sin entered into the world. Death is the result of sin. Because this world is dying. Huh? This world is dying. De- uh, death is the result of sin. Everything is not bad news. Even sa Genesis pa lang, there's already good news. In, because in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So sa Genesis 3 pa lang, after the fall of man, God has already made a plan to save us through the offspring of the woman. So God is referring to His Son, Jesus, who will later on born into this world. He will eventually crush Satan. Jesus will eventually destroy death. God was referring to Jesus the Messiah. And God chose Abraham of all the people. And God promised Abraham that He will make him a great nation and his descendants will be as numerous as the stars. And Abraham believed in God and God credited him as righteous. So salvation is by faith alone as shown by the faith of Abraham, the faith of Noah, which we have discussed already, the faith of Isaac, the faith of Jacob, the faith of Joseph. But now that we already have the New Testament, we have seen the entire purpose of God. Kasi ang mga patriarch, they only have the promise of God. But we have the 
Bible. We have the Word of God. We can rest assured in the Word of God that God will fulfill His promises. So makita na to, Genesis is just the beginning. Eventually, that promise was fulfilled when God sent His Son, Jesus Christ. Because in Romans, Romans chapter 3, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. We cannot save ourselves. We need Jesus. And the solution that God has made is to send His only begotten Son. Kung kinsan ito uniya, they will have eternal life. If you do not have Jesus, you will be afraid of death. Because you do not know what will happen. Pero kung, if you have Jesus in your heart, you will not be afraid of what will happen. Because God will surely save us. So true faith is grounded in the infallible Word of God. Because God said it, and He will fulfill it. The greatest test of our faith is when we are in the hour of our death. Will we continue to trust God to fulfill His promises, even though we don't see it? Even though our circumstances contradict His promise? So we should be like Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Abraham. All of them died without receiving the promises. But having seen them, they welcome them at a distance. So God promised us eternal life to those who believe Him. In John 5.24, Truly I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes have eternal life and have passed away from death into life. So that is the assurance that we have. So should we be afraid to face death? No. If we have Jesus, we should not be afraid. But if you do not have the Lord in your heart, this is the challenge. You know, you cannot save yourself. But God has provided a way through His Son, Jesus Christ. 